Good morning, boys and girls. Today, we are going to look at a great man by the name of Nehemiah. And our lesson today is entitled Determination and Courage. Nehemiah lived in the time when there was a king called King Xerxes who ruled uh, Persia. And in that time is that uh, the children of Israel were in exile. And they record to say that uh, there was need of rebuilding the walls of Je uh, Jerusalem, uh, the, the walls of Jericho, uh, the walls of Jerusalem rather. And at that time is that all the children of Israel were scattered and this was as a result of the time when they, they sinned against God and God was not happy with them and he scattered them abroad. But after their repentance is that uh, there was a time now to rebuild the walls of uh, Jerusalem. But news came to uh, to Nehemiah saying that uh, there is need of rebuilding the Jerusalem back to its original state. And so Nehemiah at that, uh, at that time he was in the king's palace and he worked there as a trusted official and he started thinking or planning of how to get to, uh, to, to Jerusalem and help in the rebuilding of the walls. But before we proceed on, let us just open together in a word of prayer. Our dear God and Father who art in heaven, we do give thanks and praise to you that we can be able to look into the lesson of this uh, great man called Nehemiah and how that the Lord you burdened him upon his heart the view of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem that your name may be glorified once again there. Therefore God we pray now that as we learn together with the children our Father it is our prayer that indeed you will be able to speak to, speak to their hearts and to my heart as well that together we might be ministered unto. This, our Father, we do pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, boys and girls, I'd ask you that we turn to the book of Nehemiah and we look at Nehemiah chapter 1. Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 3 says, The words of Nehemiah, the son of Achaia, now it happened in the month of Chislev, in the twentieth year, as I was in Susa, the capital, that Hanan, one of my brothers, came with certain men from Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews who escaped, who had survived the exile, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, the remnant there in the province who had survived the exile is in great trouble and shame. The walls of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates are destroyed by fire. And so uh, when this news came to, to Nehemiah is that he was informed of it and there he was, he was so troubled within his heart to say that uh, is this what has happened? And the Jews, the children of Israel is that they are living uh, in desolation and also suffering at the same time and that uh, the temple of the Lord was also destroyed and the place for worship was no longer in place. So as soon as I heard these words I sat down and wept and mourned for days and I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven and I said O oh Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear 
Be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night. For the people of Israel, your servants, confessing their sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, and the rules that you commanded your servant Moses. Remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though you you despise you disperse be under the fiercest skies i will gather them from there and bring them to the place that i have chosen to make my name dwell there they are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand O oh lord let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servant so delight to fear your name and give success to your servant today and grant him mercy in the sight of this man. And this man was called King Xerxes. And at that time is that uh, Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king called Xerxes. A cupbearer is a person who attends to the king's needs. And so Nehemiah was there troubled and he took it upon himself uh, to, upon his heart that he would face this challenge before him and this challenge would only be done only if he trust his, himself before the Lord and the Lord will be able to give him strength. But within this attempt to restore the walls of Jerusalem is that he was going to not have it easy because he was going to be faced with a lot of opposition. Okay, And so it was so hard for Nehemiah, but he knew within his heart that since I've prayed to God, is that God himself will be able to grant him uh, leave in order to go and restore the walls of, uh, of Jerusalem. And so Nehemiah had to ask for leave from, from the king. If we look at... Uh, Chapter 2, verse 2, it says, And the king said to me, Why is your face sad, seeing you are not sick? This is nothing but sadness of the heart. Then I was very much afraid. I said to the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my face be sad when the city, the place of my father's graves, lies in ruins, and its gates have been, and its gates have been destroyed by fire? Then the king said to me, what are you requesting? So I prayed to the God of heaven and I said to the king, if it pleases the king and if you, uh, if the, the king, if your servant has found favor in your sight that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's graves that I may rebuild it. And the king said to me, so it ple uh, and the king said to me, the queen sitting beside him, how long will you be gone and when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me when I had given him a time. And I said to the king, if it pleases the king, let letters be given me to the governors of the province beyond the river that they may let me pass through until I come to Judah. And a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest, that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the fort fortress of the temple and for the wall of the city, that for the house that I have, uh, that I shall occupy. And the king granted me what I asked, for the good hand of my God was upon me. And so that was now Nehemiah, given the, 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 the leave to go. And so Nehemiah in his heart he was determined and that gave him much courage to say that uh, he was ready to go and uh, build the temple and also rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. So Nehemiah was determined and there he was and 
he stood to his ground to say that uh, we are going to rebuild, and he was granted uh, uh, leave. In verse 17, we are told, Then I said to them, You see the trouble we are in? How Jerusalem lies in ruins with its gates bent? Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem, that we may no longer suffer derision. And I told them of the hand of my God that had been upon me for good, and also of the words that the king had spoken to me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for the good work. But when San Balat, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite servant, and Geshem, the Arab head of it, they jeered at us and despised us and said, What is this that you are doing? Are you rebelling against the king? Then I replied to them, The God of heaven will make us prosper, and we his servants will arise and build. But you have no portion or right or claim in Jerusalem. So Nehemiah has attempted to build the, the temple was not going to be an easy thing is that it was going to be faced with a lot of opposition. And this opposition, it has shown its ugly face in Tobias, Sanballat, and Geshem. And they stood against them to say that, oh, you are not going to build this uh, temple. But boys and girls, you can see how that as Christians is that we are faced with a lot of opposition. And that opposition always comes from Satan himself. And those are the agents of Satan. Even in your walk as a Christian, is that you are likely to be faced by this opposition. And the opposition will only come in the form of even those people who are close to you, is that Satan himself will work through them and to discourage you from coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, or to serve your God. But for Nehemiah, despite of all this opposition that he encountered, he did not sit back or listen to what they were saying, because he was determined, and he knew who sent him. And the person who sent him, it was God himself. And he had the blessings of the king to go and rebuild the temple of Jerusalem. And so the temple and the walls of Jerusalem did not stop or will stop, but instead they were completed in record time. Many are the times that uh, projects uh, are done, yet they are never completed on time. But for this one, it was completed uh, in good time. So look at the opposition that uh, Nehemiah faced in the time that they were uh, rebuilding the temple. We look at uh, Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 1. We are told that uh, now when Sanballat heard that we were building the wall, he was angry and greatly in, in, enraged. And he jeered at the Jews, and he said in the presence of his brothers and of the army of Samaria, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they restore it for themselves? Will they sacrifice? Uh, will they finish up in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish and bent ones at that? Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him, and he said, Yes, what? they are building. If a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. Can you imagine? He's even making a joke. He's even ridiculing, ridiculing them to say that, ah, ah, ah. Oh, what powers do they have such that this rubber which they are picking, will it be able to hold the wall? No, 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 it won't. It will just, even just a fox when it sits on top of it, is that it will simply fall down. 
but you can see the extent to which they made fun of them. But for, for Nehemiah, all he had within his heart was determination and with courage, and no one was going to frustrate him from the efforts of restoring the temple and the wall of Jerusalem. So now he prays, Hear, O our God, for we are despised. Turn back their taunt on their own heads and give them up to be plundered in a land where they are captives. Do not cover their guilt and let not their sin be blotted out from your sight, for they have provoked you to anger in the presence of the builders. There we see that Nehemiah, in all this ridicule that he was going through, is that he completely depended upon the Lord. And many are the times that uh, people would make fun and joke about us, uh, that uh, we are Christians, and they would do all sorts of things, is that uh, it comes to eat us within our hearts. Humanly speaking, is that we can be so frustrated and we stop uh, following the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because of the opposition that uh, we encounter. But where do we draw our strength from? We draw our strength from the Lord and we decide not to uh, give ear to the devil and his darts which beset us. But instead we turn to the Lord in prayer and he gives us courage and strength to sojourn, to walk on, and to follow him. But if we keep our ear attentively to what they are saying, is that we are likely to be discouraged and to stop following the Lord. But not, it was not enough that they, 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 they could ridicule them, but there were also attacks. If we look at verse 6, we are told, so we built the wall, and all the wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to wait. But when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabs and the Ammonites and the Ashadites heard that the repairing of the walls of Jerusalem was going forward and that the breaches were beginning to be closed, they were very angry, and they all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and to cause confusion in it. And we prayed to our God and set a guard as a protection against them day and night. So you can see, not only they used their words by ridiculing them, but they were even becoming more physical. They were ready to fight them and to challenge them. But there also Nehemiah he was determined and courageous and they had to set others to guard the, the building of the temple and the wall by others were busy with a, with a trowel. A trowel is that thing they use for doing what? For building, for getting the mortar and putting the plaster and all that. And on the other side is that they held almost like a spear in case someone comes to attack them, is that they would fight back. But instead, you can see, despite it being physical, there also Nehemiah prayed to God that he would give them courage and determination to continue. Because left to themselves is that they were going to be frustrated. They would have stopped and left the work desolate. But these guys, despite all this, they failed. And the other scheme that they had was a crafty scheme. In chapter 6, verse 1 to 4, we are told, Now when Sanbat and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies said that I had built the wall and that there was no bridge left in it, Sanbat and Geshem sent to me, saying, Come and let us meet together at Hakak Ferim in the plain of On. But they intended to do me harm. Can you imagine? is that they went to an extent to say that uh, all the attempts that we've made is that uh, we failed to do 
anything to persuade this person to stop building. But what do we do? We just need to kill him. There are times like that when the evil one would go to an extent of even uh, uh, terminating life in order to achieve uh, his aims. But what is, what do we do? We do like what Neymar did. Neymar prayed to God and God offered protection. But instead, he gave him wisdom. He did not go there. Neither did he uh, keep his ear. The word of God says, flee, flee, flee the devil and he will go away from you. So there were all these fearful threats that were came, coming to Nehemiah. In the same way, Sanbad, for the fifth time, sent his servant to me with an open letter in his hand. In it was written, it is reported among the nation, and Geshem also says it, that you and, and the Jews intend to rebel, that is why you are building the wall. And according to these reports, you wish to become their king. And you have also set up prophets to proclaim concerning you in Jerusalem. There is a king in Judah, and now the king will hear of these reports. So now come and let us take counsel together. But you can see again there, the, then I sent to him saying, no such things as you say have been done, for you are inventing them out of your own mind. For they all wanted to frighten us, thinking their hands will drop from the work and it will not be done. But now, O oh God, strengthen my hands. You see now that Nehemiah was threatened to an extent of even playing on his mind, as if like uh, uh, the, 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 they persuaded him to now to come to start defending himself. But did Nehemiah take a, uh, a step to go and defend himself? He just said, no, these are just schemes that these people are plotting. For as long as I am concerned is that I've prayed to God and I know what God has placed on my heart and that is to build the temple of God and to build the walls of Jerusalem. And besides that is that the blessings of the king himself are with me. So these people, they are simply plotting that when I go there, I'll be done what? I'll be uh, kept from from continuing and bring confusion even to the, to the builders so that they stop. But neither did they, did they stop from there. Instead, they continued to find other ways to stop uh, Nehemiah from continuing to build in the stem method. Now when I went into the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, son of Mehetabel, who was confined to his home, he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple. Let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. They are coming to kill you by night. But I said, should such a man as I run away? And what man such as I could go into the temple and leave? I will not go in. And I understood and saw that God had not sent him, but he had pronounced the prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sambal had hired him. So you see, here is another scheme that the devil would even use an angel eh, to lead us to do what? Not to follow God, but instead to be swayed away from God and to live and believe a lie. Just like if you remember very well, one of the disciples who led the Lord, eh? who betrayed the Lord to do what? To, to the Pharisees and for him to be crucified. And that was Judas. And Judas was among us then. The what? The, prophet, the, 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 the disciples of the Lord. And so he, he also is that uh, these guys, they used the prophet and they paid the prophet. To, to, swed, uh, to persuade Nehemiah, thinking that, ah, with the prophet, is that Nehemiah will be able to, to listen and fall. But instead, he did not do that at all. And so Nehemiah 
stood his ground. What does this tell us? It tells us that boys and girls, is that when we come to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, is that we need not to pay attention to the things that will sway us from the Lord, but instead we need to remain determined and be courageous. Whatever circumstances that come our way, be it of temptation, is that let the word of the Lord remind us of whom we've believed in. And so, boys and girls, remain determined and be courageous in the Lord all the times. Your friends will swear you to do wrong things, but never pay attention to them. Be like Nehemiah and be persuaded to do that which is right. Have a blessed day. Amen.